This is the strobe light animator from Mark Rober's company Crunch Labs. And today, I'm going to attempt to turn it from a strobe light animator into a strobe light projector. But before I try to do the impossible, let me first show you just how cool this thing is. The animator comes with eight little adjustable action figures, so you can pretty much create any kind of animation you want, and then watch it come to life by looking through the view hole. But the downside to this amazing toy is that the view hole is not big enough for an enjoyable viewing experience. For not only is it hard to see through, but since the plate that holds the figures is spinning, it's also blowing air out at you, so you have to squint while trying to see inside. So my solution to this problem is to try and turn the animator into a projector. Then you could project your animations onto a wall and not have to squint to see through the little view hole. Now this seemed to me like a worthy engineering challenge, so I went over to Mark Rober's four step engineering design process and started with the first step, which is to research the topic. So I got straight to work researching online and learning what I could about projectors. And now I think is a good time to review the science of how projectors work. You know how you can cut out a small hole and then put a flashlight behind it to reflect light on the wall that mimics the shape of the hole? Well, a projector works similarly, but instead of light going through an open hole, it goes through a lens, and an inverted image is magnified on the wall. I've got an example here, where if you take an image on your phone and put it behind a magnifying glass lens, then when you hold it up to the wall, you get a really cool effect like this. And this is how projectors work, but instead of using an LED screen, they have a light that shines through a piece or multiple pieces of film that get projected onto the wall. So now that you know how projectors work, it's time for step two of the engineering design process, which is to build a prototype. And referring to what I just showed you about projectors, I knew exactly what to build. My plan was to make a new cardboard lid for the animator, and then cut two holes parallel to each other so I could shine a light through one end and have it pass through the figures and a magnifying glass and then exit the other end onto the wall, seemingly creating a really cool projection. But the one little problem is, this theory would never work. And the reason for this is the figures only light up when light is beneath them, because the edges of the figures are roughed up so when light passes through them, the light bounces around and hits your eyes. But you can't really see the animation when light is all around them. And if you look at this test run I did, you can see this happening predictably. And I didn't even try to add a magnifying glass to the end of the second hole because it would just make the shadows bigger. And besides, this animator doesn't even function like an actual projector because it spins its animations in a circular motion, while real projectors slide their film in a straight line. And this just left me high and dry, because referring to what I knew about projectors at the time, this was all I could come up with, and there seemed to be absolutely no way forward. Until I found a loophole. For even though I didn't know what my final design was going to look like or how to build it, I could see if there was a way to build a classic homemade projector, and then modify its design for my purposes. And so after a little browsing on the internet, I found some tutorials on how to make a DIY iPhone projector. Now all that was left to do was to gather some supplies, then put it all together with a 20 second build montage. And now that it is complete, it's time for step three of the engineering design process, which is sensitivity analysis, what matters. So I set to work testing the projector by first putting a phone in the holder and playing a video upside down because the magnifying glass lens would flip the image. Then I held it up to the wall and all I could see was a splotch of colors and no real image. So I tried different distances between the magnifying glass and the phone, but got no better result. So after pondering this failure, I eventually pinpointed the problem. It was the magnifying glass. 
Apparently, this one was not able to magnify the image enough to project it clearly. So after this discovery, I purchased another that would enlarge at least two times the amount of the first magnifying glass. Then once I had removed the old one and inserted the new one, it was time for a second try. Let's go time. Like the rush you get from like an engineering achievement actually working is like seriously, dude. Oh. So now that I had a functioning projector, it was time to analyze the sensitivity. And after some experimentation with the phone distance from the lens and the projector distance from the wall, I made a really interesting discovery. The farther you have your projector from the wall, the bigger the image is going to be. You can see this is the image size for about one foot away from the wall, and here's the size for five feet away. Now keep in mind that the further back you put the projector, the more grainy your image will be. But the closer you put it, the sharper the image. So you either have a bigger but grainier image, or a much smaller but sharper image. And now that step three is complete, it's time for the fourth and final step, which is to make the final build. And after all I had learned from building the projector, it helped me to realize that the strategy I was trying earlier to turn the animator into a projector was the only way to make a projection using only the animator. And since that strategy didn't work, that means there is absolutely no way to turn the animator itself into a projector. But not all hope is lost, for there is still a way that we can achieve our original goal, and here's how. Once you have an animation that you're happy with, video it with your phone, and then you can put that video that you took into your projector, and done. Now you have the ability to project your strobe light animations onto your wall using a homemade projector. In fact, this way is even better because you can video multiple animations and then watch them one after another instead of having to reanimate the figures every time you want to watch something new. And this is just the perfect example of what being an engineer is like. Engineering is an iterative process. I started out thinking I was going to have to modify the actual strobe light animator to get the results that I wanted. But it's that process of tweaking and changing and learning and modifying that gets you to that really good solution. And if you would like to learn this superpower for yourself, then head on over to crunchlabs.com with the parents. And once you're there, you can learn more about how it all works. Thanks for watching. Now you have the ability. Now you have the ability to. Pro now you have the ability. Wait. N now you have the ability to. Now you have the. Now you have the ability. Now you have the ability. Now you have. Now you have the ability. Now you have the ability to project your strobe light animations onto your wall using a homemade projector. Yeah!